landslides. It's that he's lost very close games, Donnie. It almost makes it worse, right? He's not even converting when he has a chance, and, and that's a problem. It definitely makes it worse. Because if you're losing by one-move blunders, and yeah, technically he lost the last game with a one-move blunder, but it was already bad. If you're losing because you're not getting out of the opening or you know, you're blundering, you can make active changes. You can steer the game in a different direction. You can change your openings. But when the problem is occurring below the surface, when you're getting what you want and then still losing, Sicilian with a B takes C6 variation. Danny, it's more common to take with the D pawn to open up the light square yeah. bishop, but Magnus, I think, just going for the kill. Yeah, and he's playing a very sharp line that objectively is, 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 is pretty good for white. We see that only pawns have moved here for black because the knight was traded. White has a big center, a queen in the middle of it, and peace is coming. So objectively, white is a little better, but as Donya said, it's kind of more Magnus going for the kill here because this is one of those games that's going to be super double-edged. And if he gets another victory in a really sharp Sicilian, having chosen, I'll just quickly show it, to play B takes C6 here instead of the D takes C6 more solid lines, then that could really spell more disaster for so. Here comes e5 for Magnus. Okay. What a wild one we're going to have here. And we're likely going to get that g8 knight uh, ferried over to f7. Knight g8 to h6 to f7 is very standard uh, in this line. And then Magnus has to make sure that he's covering all of the weak squares in his position. I mean, obviously his structure is a little bit flimsy, but it's simultaneously flimsy, but also very, very solid. If you imagine yeah. a black pawn on d6, he's got this whole e5 f6 g6 pawn cocoon and that does make right. it difficult for white to infiltrate i actually think that if both sides are able to complete their development danny we, we might switch from a tactical battle to a more positional game by the way knight takes e5 here needs to be calculated i don't think there's any chance of working but that might be what wesley's thinking about as he drops his queen to c3 i, I think we should analyze that real quick i, I want to show on the analysis board because i think especially for most of the viewers knight takes e5 is the tactic that is like wait is this a puzzle rush moment a5 knight oh. takes e5 just <laughs> point out the problem is that if you take take we have a little shake and bake and the rook is hanging but the issue is when you take on e5 always look for your opponent's threats before you assume a tactic works queen a5 check actually just picks up a piece oh black. so anyway so that's why i played yeah. a queen c3 now he's actually threatening knight takes e5 and magnus magnus can't play knight h6 here which is the the move you want to play so I think he's yeah. going to have to go bishop g7 or go knight e7 or d6 maybe because of that threat. Or rook to b8. Oh, oh Daddy. What are you preparing, Daddy? Uh, Why yeah. can't I take on e5 there? Hey, you know, I uh, I just brought little, little tricks today, yeah, right? To silly, silly Danny tricks are for kids. Um, no, but I'll add something else to what you said, because I think if black does develop... You pointed out that black's position is a very solid, but I'll say it's also very flexible, and let's not forget that black has the bishop pair. That's probably what you gained in order to lose development, and if a position slowly becomes more and more open, whether that is on the queen side with diagonals, whether it's with d5...
Magnus might have been relying on g4 check, and it's kind of a cutesy move. You can't really take on g4 because of the fork on e2. But the king can hide amongst the trees there on g3, and black is way too slow to generate kingside counterplay. I think we might see g4 just for just for good measure, but that's that's not going to create a counterplay that, that that seriously countervails what's going on on the queen side. I think this might be Wesley's first win. Okay, e4, but I think you can actually take that. Yeah, I think I think you kind of need to because it's harder to hide in the trees if you don't take it. Yeah, no more trees. Trouble, yes. <laughs> yeah. Speaking yeah. of trees, don't get don't get yourself made. <clears throat> so bishop comes to e2. You can just move the rook, I think, to attack the bishop. He does. Yeah. Okay, now knight c6. Get the e7 square so that there's no nasty little check with the rook. I would go knight c6 yeah. prophylactically. I was looking at there was a way to punch the pawn. There really isn't tactically yet. You don't want to do that. So, yeah, the king is in danger. Nice c6. I love it. It also, by the way, does threaten the a7 pawn. Mm -hmm. But watch the clock. This is exactly what Magnus wants. If it gets into a time scramble, black has practical yep. chances. Rook c8, an excellent alternative. Knight c6 now. And I think Wesley, a couple of accurate moves away as Magnus tries to prepare f5 check. Wow. And I guess king should c5. What a, what a simplifying move. Oh, king e3 is so nice. The rook defense, the bishop on c5, no discovery. And go back to e4 now after this check. It just sits pretty in the center. I love bishop c5, even if knight c6 was better. What a nice way to simplify the game if you're Wesley so. Just take it. You're eliminating tactics. And that was so nice, Danny, how he took the bishop on c5. You could have also taken the rook, but that the was rook. a lot more complicated. Yeah. This is much yeah. easier to play. Rook e2, just don't give up that d5 pawn and you're golden. Yeah. It's not over yet, but Wesley so converts this. It has it has been the most complete start to finish game for him in the match and and a very good sign for Wesley So fans out there. Really only one mistake to not play Rook AC1 gave Magnus some practical chances, but yep. after that Wesley never looked never looked back and yep. look at how he finishes the game, counterattacking the rook, the final very blow. Nice move.